Six months ago, April sat in front of her laptop. She would never have imagined faulting a crumbling barricade into a quarantine to hell. But she had a mission, an obsession. One that sustained her through freezing nights and starving days, keeping her focused, giving her something to live for. This quarantined hell provided her with the opportunity to finish that mission, to find Warren Merchant and get answers to some very important questions. How did Warren Merchant know April Cat? Why was Bill murdered? And did Merchant know about the creation of the Green Poison? April spent the spring looking in the dark zone, following clues she'd pieced together over the winter. Over the past week she had become familiar with every block of the barrier cutting the zone off from the rest of the city. Although the joint task force tried, it was impossible to completely seal off an area the size of the dark zone. Her mission brought her to 117 West 58th Street. She entered a thrashed store that looked to be a bike shop. Before doing anything else, she took a moment to listen. Listen for human presence. There was a sense of presence that registered somewhere behind the conscious mind. Proceeding through the hallway, she spotted a stairway with stairs leading down to the basement level. Slowly descending, she moved into another hallway, opening into boiler rooms, maintenance closets and more. She then moved into a larger room. In it was a large server rack, bedding and crumpled cardboard boxes scattered across the floor with food cartons and loose cigarettes. With her heart hammering against her sternum, she moved to the middle of the room, where a map of Manhattan Island was laid out, folding on a table. Left of it was a whiteboard with a list of names written on it, each key to a set of coordinates. She looked through the names and saw her own. However, Merchant wasn't here. After all the puzzles she solved, she still had one left. Where was Merchant? Moving back to the stairway, April slowly moved through the rest of the building, floor by floor with the Super 90 pressed against her hip. Upon reaching the third floor, she noticed a soft hum of electrical equipment coming from one of the doors in the hallway. Stepping into the doorway, she noticed diagnostic equipment lining the wall. Across it, two desks and a wall lined with bookshelves. One book jumped out at her. New York Collapse. As her eyes looked through the rest of the room, they led her to a man sitting at one of the desks. Warren Merchant. Merchant welcomed April. There was a lot to talk about and April had some questions that needed answering. The first thing she wanted to know, how did you know to leave that wanted poster? He answered, I was watching you, I had some people out observing certain locations. I knew that people would only visit them if they had discovered some breadcrumbs I left in the book. And you were the only one they reported seeing. So then I started trying to keep an eye on you, but it wasn't easy. You moved around and then there was the unfortunate business in the condominium. April remembered the moment when she, Miko and Drew were kidnapped by a gang of convicts that escaped from Rikers Island. A division agent tracking the gang found them and freed them after a firefight, but both Miko and Drew were killed. And so was the agent. His name was Dog Sutton, Merchant said. When he didn't continue, April said, tell me about Bill. Merchant answered, you mean why he was killed? And April responded with, yes, what was he doing? Why was he killed? Did it have something to do with the virus? He answered, sort of, but not in the way you might expect. Bill was part of a team experimenting with a new vaccine design. I'm not a virologist, so I won't pretend to know the details, but the upshot is that the new design would be able to handle a large number of mutated versions of a particular virus. This class of design goes by the designation BSAV, or Broad Spectrum Antiviral. Before I moved into management, I was a lab scientist myself. Your husband's company, SBGX, had significantly advanced BSAV research. And what you see here is a simplified sketch of the work other scientists have done, using SBGX's work to prototype a design for a BSAV that would combat Amherst virus. April asked, Amherst? He created the virus one person? Hard to believe, but yes, a skilled virologist with the right tool can both design miracles and catastrophes. Amherst was very skilled. Fortunately, there are still surviving scientists who are just as gifted. And it's a good thing too, because Amherst virus could mutate enough to begin spreading again. He designed it to do exactly that. So no single treatment would eliminate it permanently. You see how important the work is. So Bill was working on this BSAV. You think that's why he was killed? The merchant answered, I don't know for sure. Maybe Amherst and Chernenko were cleaning up loose ends. Maybe they were trying to delay the production of a vaccine. 
it was a chaotic time. Were there other people killed, like Bill? You have to understand, I was on the run too. I wrote a book because I knew Amherst was up to something. He designed the virus alone, but you can't do something like that without drawing at least a little interest from other apocalyptic types. They all frequent the same websites, that kind of thing. And megalomaniacs can't help boasting at least a little. That's how I started to get suspicious. No one knew exactly what he was doing, but quite a few people knew he was doing something and approved of it. They would have killed me the minute I said anything out loud. I was hoping someone would follow the breadcrumbs in the book, so at least in the end someone would learn the truth about what happened. Then when I learned you were hunting through puzzles, I gave you a little assist. The one that posted. I thought you might have wanted to know you were on the right track. But after I saw what happened to Bill and some others, I couldn't risk coming out into the open to find you. I had to wait for you to find me. And I'm glad you did. Now, since you're here, I've got some news for you. The broad spectrum antiviral bill was helping to prototype. It exists. How was that possible? Where? Why isn't anyone making it? Merchant answered, it's still a few doses. There are a precious few places left where one could manufacture a vaccine. But Dr. Jessica Kendall, working in a JTF lab here in New York, prototyped a vaccine for the existing strain of variola chimera, the green poison. She managed to get a design to a surviving lab in Ann Arbor, Michigan. They in turn have used it and your husband's work on broad spectrum antiviral to design a vaccine that will combat mutant strains of the green poison. And this vaccine works on every observed mutation of the disease, or at least so I am told. In Ann Arbor, the lab in Ann Arbor had some time to prepare before the virus began to spread there. So some of their lab staff already had to quarantine themselves so they could continue their work. And these people in Ann Arbor, did they know Bill? Would they know what happened to him? Maybe. They had a working agreement with SBGX. I wouldn't be surprised if they knew him and possibly even survived the attacks themselves. But having said all that, I don't even know if the rumors are true. They could be all wishful thinking and there might not be any broad spectrum antiviral at all. If you never written the book, if you just told someone instead, a lot of other people would still be alive. From one angle, you could call it cowardice. I understand. But there's something else you have to understand if I have not already explained it enough clearly. Thanks to associates in various intelligence communities, I suspected there was an active plot to release a bioengineered virus, but I did not know anything beyond that. No hints of who was doing it or when it might happen. All I knew was that the plot existed and that elements within the government also suspected it and were supportive of it, if you can believe that. To raise the alarm in public would have caused a panic without materially changing Emmer's plan. He might have moved, gone underground to a different lab. Also, there was a strong possibility that, well, you know, what happened to Bill? He wasn't the only one. As I said, there are rogue elements in the government and military who saw a possible catastrophe as a means to power, and it could easily have ended up dead. So, I took another approach, hoping someone would be interested enough to run down the truth. And then the fires were released and a number of people in a position to have suspected Emmer's project began dying. So I, well, I went dark as I told you. As dark as you could get. In the dark zone. The only people who would know my location were certain division personnel and whoever followed the breadcrumbs I left in the book, which you managed to do. Five months too late, and how many millions dead? Well, I don't think I could have changed that. But I tried to do something. April was visibly conflicted. In her gut, she blamed him for everything that happened, but she also understood what he was saying. But her feelings didn't matter. She got what she needed, some answers and some more questions. This was the start of her journey to Ann Arbor, where she hoped she'd get more answers to the question that she still had. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the intro brief, I would like to ask you to like or dislike, share, subscribe and click the notification bell to become part of the Masterminds HD community and notification squad. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram for daily updates and behind the scenes posts. Join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy's Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. Visit my Patreon page through the link in the description if you're interested in the intro briefs on the factions, characters and events with the summarized information from these videos. And to end the video, I have a question for you. What questions are still left unanswered and what new questions arose? Leave your answers and questions in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. I'll talk to you in the next video on Discord, Instagram, Twitter or YouTube. Peace out.